shoot. Hi, I'm the Morlander and this is Morlander EDC. Back again this week with another watch video. Now, this is a watch that as soon as I put it on my wrist, as soon as I hear it, as soon as I, you know, pick up again on its little kind of eccentricities, its little niggles, it shuttles me, rockets me straight back 30 years ago to my first watch. Well, actually second watch. My first watch was a Casio, my second watch was a Swatch watch. So today we are looking at the Swatch watch Big Bold Spectrum. Now, I mentioned a few things there and these are true, these are things that we'll look at and that is that Swatch watches do have certain issues. Now, some people would call them issues, some people call them eccentricities. They're just things that you have to understand by owning one of these that it's something that you need to remember. Now, the usual type of watch that you'd probably think that I would watch, would wear, would be something that was probably, you know, quite hard wearing, quite rugged, um, something that has lots of different functions, something that maybe looks a little bit more classy, something that hey is water resistant and yes that is usually something that if is if it's not water resistant hard pass but what you get with this for me is a massive nostalgia kind of hit so it, it you know it, it sings to me so i'll turn the camera around now so we can have a closer look if this is your first time to moreland 3dc then please feel free to hit that like button if you've been back again or you've watched some of my other videos please feel free to subscribe that would be awesome it means a huge deal for me it means a huge deal for my channel and my community but for now let's turn the camera around so that we can have a look at this so i thought we'd go through some details about the watch first and then we'll have a look around it seems to make sense that way um, so first of all, it is a quartz movement. It's a battery operated quartz movement. You can see the quartz movement inside there. Also, you can see the resin or plastic case that the body is made from is um, transparent so that you can see through it. Um, the strap is made from a nice kind of rubbery silicon. Oh, excuse the finger there. I got bit by my knife the other day. Um, it's nice and thick, it's also nice and malleable so it, it really does fit and contour to your wrist quite well. Um, the buckle is a plastic buckle, it has two um, stays here for the strap. Um, the, the face or at least the glass material, so there's no mineral glass here or there's no um, sapphire glass, this is just plastic glass so you do need to be careful uh, as far as wear and tear and, and scrapes are concerned and hopefully you can see the rose here is up at the two o'clock position it just has the hour and minutes hand uh, and then you've also got a second that rotates around as well um, as all seconds hands do hopefully <laughs> Um, as far as measurements are concerned, the width from side to side is 47 millimeters. The thickness, it is quite a thick watch, but again, I, I quite like that, um, is 11.75, uh, and from top to bottom is um, 44 millimeters. It does come in a variety of different colors. Now, what I'll do is, let me just grab my phone so here if you can see there is this is the green one the one that i have which is called pink taste and that is because the surround on the inside the the, the transparent section has a pink tint to it but i don't quite get it because you look at this and you think green so here we also have blue taste which again you can see the blue on the inside a lot more on this one but it has that pink um, neon that kind of surrounds it and then here you have the same where you have it's called fire taste um, but again when I look at that all I see is the blue around it and that's what jumps out to me but Swatch decided that they'd go with that naming convention. So here we have the watch again and let's have a little bit more of a look around the watch and we'll go through some of the things that you need to know as well. First thing, and that is that this is water resistant to 30 atmospheric pressure or three bar. 
That doesn't mean that you can swim to the bottom of a pool by 30 meters. What that really means is that this is just splash resistant. If it gets splashed whilst you're doing the dishes, if it gets splashed whilst you're out in the rain, you should really dry it as soon as possible. That is one of the first unfortunate downsides of these lovely watches is the fact that you can't really get them wet. So when you think about those other watches that you probably picture me with, this is one of the main reasons that you probably wouldn't picture me with this watch. So you do have to be careful as to how you wear this. Just to go around it then, so as I said, we have a really nice, big, clear watch face there. You can see the movement on the inside. Actually, as I have that in the light there, you can see it picks up quite a bit of that pink in there. This is the bit, this is that huge nostalgia thing for me that I was just like, do you know that it just screams of the 1980s and I, I have to have this watch. Um, so the hour hands, as you can see, nice, big, thick, large hour hands. Then round the outer rim, you can see that it then has minutes on there. And then round the far rim, you have this green accent which matches the, um, the, the dials on the inside as well. The only other things to point out on the inside there, as hopefully as you can see, it says Swatch and then underneath it says Swiss Made. So one of the things that you'd expect from a Swiss Made watch is, you know, accuracy, the, the, the way in which it's made. And that is what you get with these watches. It's a quart watch, so you can, make, you can rest assured that as far as um, losing time, it's not going to lose time. It is going to be very accurate. And what you also get with this is, if I hold this quite still, hopefully you can see that the, the way in which the second hand moves round. So it is a one movement per second, but it is incredibly precise. I've sat while I've had this watch on and I've sat and tried to see if you get some of the other things that you do get with quartz watches and that is that sometimes when it moves and that tick and it locks into position you get a bit of you get a mo bit of sway you get a movement in the second hand in the second hands with this it is Oh, it's just as sweet as a nutshell. It really is. It, it locks into position for a second. There's no wavering. It's a, it's a very beautiful movement. Same with the hands. The, the other hands, they, they just glide round gently and you don't have any issues with them whatsoever. The strange thing is, though, with this being a Swiss watch with a Swiss movement that is produced in Switzerland, you just wouldn't expect it to be so loud. And that is one of the other things about Swatch watches that I'd completely forgotten about until I had this on my wrist day one. Man, these watches are loud, really loud. The tick from this is louder than the tick on my clock on the wall. Now there's probably a few reasons why that is. The, the main one is probably because it's made from plastic. Had this been constructed from um, metal, or at least maybe some sort of ceramics and had a glass face, then it probably would help to dampen some of that noise down, but it doesn't. And it makes a lot of noise. But again, this is just one of the eccentricities, the characteristics, the quirks that Swatch watches have. I remember my mum, the dear, uh, late and great Queen of the Moorlands. She, um, she used to take her watch off. She was a very, very, very light sleeper. When, when I and the other princes, we used to go out, um, she'd wait up every night until we got back. And even if she had fallen asleep, as soon as that key was entered into the door, then, you know, she'd wake up. Um, she used to take her swatch off and put it in her underwear drawer while she slept so that she could, she could sleep. Yeah, love that woman. So anyway, it's just one of the things that you need to be aware of when you do buy these watches. Crown at the top here, as you can see, is in the two o'clock position. It's nice and easy to pull out, has a nice click, easy to push in. When you pull it out, you know, it's very simple to change the time. Um, so around the face, you have these amazing colors. On the back here, you can see, as it's completely transparent, you can see all of the internal workings which again, it's, it's awesome to look into this sort of stuff. When you have a mechanical watch um, and you can, or an automatic watch, and you have that window in the back so that you can see into, you know, that just amazing how a watch works. It's great that when you pull out the pin and you can see the bits that are whirring and ticking in there, that it, it works and it's, it's amazing. But 
What you can also see on here is the um, the door to the watch battery. So if you do need to change the battery, you can just pop that out. You just need to have a coin or a key or something like that in there, turn it around and you'll be able to change the battery yourself. Whilst we're on the back here, hopefully you can see or notice here that the um, the lugs, instead of having the typical two lugs either side, Swatch have decided that they have their proprietary lug system. So instead you can see it has two of the ones in here, which means if you wanted another off the shelf watch, I don't know, you're in an airport, you need something, then you just can't get that. You have to buy Swatch watch straps from them, which is a real shame. If they'd done it so that you could add other watches to these, other straps to these, I think that would make a big difference. I'm probably guessing though, but that because this is made from plastic, it might actually be that they are there to strengthen these, uh, these clasps um, because of the material that it's made from. That might be a reason. It might also be so that they could make sure that they get everybody going back to buy their watch straps but again it's just something that you need to consider when you buy one of these watches i'm painting quite a bad picture of it here and there are as i say quite a few characteristics quite a few little niggly things that owning a swatch watch have that normally i go no that's not a watch for me but for this one you know it, it just i just love this watch so on the uh, buckle hopefully you can see here it just closes now point to other manufacturers everybody should start doing this if you can see here it has two little nipples two little nodes and what this does is this holds this first watch keeper in place so that as you pass it under you have your first one and then you have a second one if you choose to have that on there i quite like that in fact i like that a lot what it does mean is if you wanted to move this out you just pull it over those little tabs and then you can freely slide it around. The straps themselves are, oh, might have to do this against my leg. Hey, look, there's the Moorlanders huge, ugly hobbit feet. Uh, the straps themselves are very comfortable. It fits perfectly on the wrist. It's not too tight. I have quite large wrists. We Moorlanders have uh, quite large wrists. This being the big bold, it should look like a huge watch on a mere mortal's wrist. However, on my wrist, you know, it, it just kind of fades into that grrr, manly wrist. Sorry about that. I love on my wrists a bit too much. So there you go. The watch that within less than a week, I've learned to love and hate, but is it a watch that is flawed, yes. Is it a watch that I'd buy again? Yes, within a heartbeat. There's a certain nostalgia for me for these watches and that's why this one here, as soon as I saw it on Instagram, I thought that is the watch that I'd love to have. It screams of 80s neon kind of, again, nostalgia. I, I don't wanna overuse that word, but it really does. It takes me back straight to when I was growing up in my teens and I absolutely love this watch, even for its downfallings. Now, hey, links in the description below, as they usually are, but one of the things that I really like about my channel is the fact that my uh, followers, my subs and you know everybody, we, we do like to communicate a lot on the um, comments below. What I'd like to hear from you this week is what is your swatch big bold spectrum what is that thing that you know for you you wouldn't somebody would go no he, that's not his watch or no 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 he's, he's not into those cars or whatever what's that car that or what's that thing what's the item that you would buy again even though you know it's flawed even though you know it has its strange little eccentricities what's that thing that you'd buy again because it just takes you back. It makes you feel young again. That's what I'd like to hear in the comments below. Um, if you'd like to see more from me, then like, subscribe, share, all of that normal stuff. Check me out on Instagram as well. I'm on Instagram a lot more than I'm on Facebook. You can find me on Facebook as well, but if you look for me at Morlander underscore EDC on Instagram, then you'll see me there a lot. You'll also see a lot of the other things that I'm testing in the meantime that will um, eventually come to the channel. Cool. 
So for now, stay safe, stay Morelander, and stay EDC. Oh, is it recording? Bloody hell. <clears throat> Hi, I'm the Morlander and this is Morlander EDC. Today is definitely something different. This is possibly, no, that's not even right. Shoot. Again, with the breathing in thing. Is made from silicone. The glass on the front, there's no sort of mineral glass uh, or anything like that, it's just a, a resin um, plastic uh, bollocks. Completely see through body, so if, hopefully, if you can see there, you can see that my finger's moving as well. Um, but yeah, it's completely see through. The whole of the. Um... Damn it!